Put up your split screen now. Or you don't need it, huh? No, I just got it. In the well, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call this Tree Advisory Commission meeting for March 5th, 2020 to order. Okay. And uh, welcome everybody here. Can we start with introductions from the uh, from Tony? Tony Gugesberg, advisor. Tom Schmitz, Park and Recreation Department advisor. Ellen Vancura, Tree Commission. Um, Lisa Langer, Tree Commissioner. And Tom Romain, Commission member. Arlen Body, Commission member. Greg Dearson, Commission member. Steve Kaler, <coughs> City Engineer. Well, thank you all. I uh, would entertain a motion for approval of the agenda that's before us. I'll make a motion. Um, second. Is there a second? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, old business, 2020 city reimbursement programs and budget update. Um, Mr. Kaler. Uh, certainly, Mr. Chair. Did you want to do the minutes? or? Oh, hmm. glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, approve a motion or entertain a motion for approval of the minutes of the January 2nd meeting. Or, uh, I'll make that motion. I'll motion, second that. Motion by body, second by Langer to approve the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign, motion carries. Now, old business. <laughs> Steve. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you've got a spreadsheet in your packet with some colorful cells in it that show the uh, tree reimbursement program costs. And obviously, in the middle of winter, we haven't uh, done anything since the first of the year, so <coughs> we have no tree reimbursements at this time. Down toward the bottom in the first column to the left in blue is what your budget was uh, adopted as by the city council in december of 2019 so you have a total of seven thousand split up uh, itemized as 4200 for disease and boulevard tree program reimbursements contractual services expenses a thousand tree pest policy and educational expenses 800 printing and pamphlet 700 and home show 300 and 300 is the the home show has been billed out so that's the only expense at this time and then right below that 7,000 total uh, you had requested that uh, the City Council carry over any unused funds from 2019 which they approved uh, in February of this year in the amount of 2947.06 so your total budget is just under 10,000 at 9947.06 and you have a remaining balance of less just take off that 300 for 96.4706. So that's where we're at with the reimbursements and budget. Thank you. Any questions for Steve? Okay, let's uh, PUC future tree programs discussion, and uh, Derek is not here. Uh, we may, may want to address this a little bit later on. Uh, I, my personal belief here is that we should uh, ask the Public Utilities Commission to fund a relief program here particularly that there's probably a high likelihood that people are going to be needing to replace shade trees in their on their property this year so if um, if I could I'd like to make a motion the motion would be that the uh, the City Council direct the uh, Public Utilities Commission to fund a relief program at the same levels that they have and the priorities would be of course energy uh, savings and uh, replacements of trees lost to emerald ash borer on private property. I'll second that motion. Okay, second. Motion by Romain, seconded by Body. Any discussion? Would we put that on the agenda for next <coughs> next meeting to discuss with the public utility with Derek? Well, then we could always always discuss it again at the next meeting, but why would you want to postpone this thing for two months? 
Oh, I don't want to postpone it. Okay. I'm just thinking, when are we going to just when it? How is this going to get back to public utilities that we're requesting this? Well, my sense in reading the city ordinances is that we are an advisory commission to the city council, so we communicate with the council. The council communicates with the public utilities commission. That's my sense. Okay. If if I have the wrong sense. Mr. Chair, um, we could perhaps discuss it with the city manager and city attorney because the city council doesn't really direct the Public Utilities Commission. There, but they, I think we could get the request to the okay. PUC in some fashion. So, so we get we understand what you want to do. So I would I would be open to a friendly amendment on this okay. that instead of the we make a, the motion and communicate with the city council and the PUC through the city manager. Yeah, what do you think, Tom? I think that's yes, doable. Yes, yes, I would agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, so is there a second for the amended resolution? I will second that. Okay. Any further discussion on the amended resolution? Would you want it kind of at the current, uh, last year's funding level? Just yes. so, okay. Any more discussion? I'll call question. All those are in favor? Of the resolution before us, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, well, same sign. Thank you. Moving on with old business, uh, Emerald Ashbor, on uh, in the uh, item before us here is the uh, new tack Emerald Ashbor frequently asked questions, draft 437. <laughs> <laughs> so is there? Uh, is there any further discussion on the on the draft that had been emailed back and forth? Can you remind me, is this intended to be our public utilities insert? This would be one side of the April insert. The other side would be the um, How do I get big tree contest. This okay. the screen. I reviewed it. I think it looks good. Three and seven and four of seven. Okay, let me try. Are you coming in again? And then, um... Okay. Maybe I don't know. Oh. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. Thanks. Any questions or comments on the on the drafts? I think it looks pretty good. I think we should move ahead with that. Tony, what do you think? Have you read it? Um, I'm working on it right now. Okay. <laughs> but is this going to be accepted right now or if there's any other questions that it, it's going to be. be in the public utilities april bill that goes out to everybody this the frequently asked questions will be one side of the insert and the big tree registration description of the contest will be on the other side so if there's any changes they still could be made next week well or do you want to <laughs> with what do you have here i mean it's a good start i think well, it's, it's a good start a good, good information it's it's well into the start yeah, yeah. <laughs> may i ask who the city tree inspector is uh, i think that's handled from the engineering department that would be jeff anderson in my department okay i just didn't know who it was the engineering department You know, I, I think it looks good, and um, we we can do this and send this out, and then uh, if new questions come up and we start getting the same old questions, maybe we do do this again and put those questions in there, and we just keep maybe updating it and adding new information. Now we have a... Um 
second opportunity this year in the August right. PUC flyer or invoice. And Mr. Chair, if they got any of the questions, there's phone numbers on here, you know, certainly could call it. I think, it, Mr. Chair, it could also be attached to the Tree Commission page of the website as well, mm -hmm. if you guys approve yeah. it and want that done. Mm -hmm. I, I also think we can use it at the home show. Have copies available at the home show for people to pick up because we probably will get questions there. Good idea. Yes, we've often um, made those 7,000 copies in March that go into the utility stuffers, utility billing, um, and then brought some of those to the home show. So I think we have enough time <coughs> yet. It's still, you know, the farm show, double hockey tournament. The, the, the home show is three weeks away, so we can get that printed. And, and so it's plenty early for the April stuffer, and there are copies at the home show. Okay. Yeah, because we've always given out the big tree contest. Yeah, yeah. Flyers there as well. Any any more discussion on the frequently asked questions? Well, I don't think we need a resolution to put this in place. It's yeah. so moving on. Home and Health Show Civic Center, <coughs> March twenty seventh through twenty nine. We had put together a schedule earlier, and the booth set up on on Friday anytime prior to 2.30 is Tom Romain. This is the present one. Booth staffing from 3 to 8 on March 27th was Jordy. Thank you, Jordy. And Ellen. And booth staffing March 28th, 10 to 5, Lisa and Ellen. And booth staffing March 29th, 11 to 4, Ellen and Tom, and then booth takedown was Tom. And Arlen mentioned to me before the meeting that he could help out on some of these shifts. So yes. Have you any interest? <laughs> I can help set up on Friday. Okay. But the other days I'm spoken for. Okay. Three is the beginning, is the opening of yeah, the time to, to park and rec usually delivers the boxes of stuff, yep. and then we go through it and kind of pick up, put the booth out, and then when people with better taste than me show up, they rearrange the booth. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chair, is there any, uh, uh, I'm just wondering, because I work with the Home and Health Show, if uh, anybody would be willing to do a seminar on Sunday? Sunday is going to be kind of a horticulture day for seminars. Um, talking about plants and trees and flowers and just curious if any commissioners want to just talk about emerald ash borer or anything else um, is anybody interested in doing that I am not <laughs> <laughs> are there specific time slots open Mr. Uh, there, on there, the seminar schedule good question um, there right now no times have been set depending on who's all going to give seminars it kind of go from probably uh, 11.30, between 11.30 and 3. We don't want to get too late. When, when we, I work with the, uh, the forester who since left the DNR, and there's a new forester in place, but um, the ability to d put a presentation on, there was, there was no ability to project any kind of a program onto the screen, so you're basically standing up in front of a group of people just talking to them, and that's, that's a real difficult venue to occupy for a half an hour just talking to a group of people unless you're much more dynamic speaker than I am so 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 you're looking at but if there was a screen there uh, I'm no I'm, I'm really not interested okay. in doing this that's fine it's enough that we're putting together the booth and staffing the booth and and uh, you know to ask I'm just not willing to add any more to my responsibilities on that weekend. Okay, that's fine, just so we know. Certainly would encourage other people that might want to speak to the group to speak to them. There's other topics besides emerald ash borer. I mean, we can talk about our invasive species issues and everything else in the city, so. And, and years ago, I think the seminars were conducted upstairs in the meeting room, but now they're conducted 
on one of the floors of the one of the arenas. Yeah, down uh-huh. in the main level, yeah. just because. Yeah. People didn't always see where to mm-hmm. go up on top. Although the meeting room up on top is nice, I yeah. really prefer to give seminars up there because it's quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. But. Mm-hmm. So the seminars are, are they in the South Arena or the North Arena this year? The or? North. The North Arena on one of the ends. Yeah. There's a stage set up. Or yeah, it's the, it's, it's just set up. Okay. Chairs set up in front of an elevated platform, yeah. and people are wandering through the venue. It's it's not a real good speakers venue. Mm-hmm. Okay. The upstairs conference room would be a much better venue if if people would walk upstairs to the conference room because it's set up for a presentation. Yeah. Any further discussion? Is there a, if anybody is interested, is there a final date for getting on the slate of speakers? I think we'd like to know by next Wednesday because some of the papers go out listing the seminars. Anybody is interested in doing that, I would suggest that they contact Tony before next Wednesday. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for bringing it up. Moving on, Buckthorn updated. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, me, Chair. Uh, before we move on, a couple of quick items. One is, could you possibly um, email me or email the commission the updated uh, schedule and sure. list of uh, booth workers so we all have that. Um, and then I'm wondering if we might, if, if we want to go back at all to uh, 5.3, if there are any other EAB topics that we wanted to discuss at this meeting, um, either the the hard copy document that was distributed or an update on the on the grant or the bid opening that was uh, that happened yesterday, or you, you want to cover that some other time? I don't know. Well, we can cover that in new business. Uh, we had the agenda open for modification earlier on, and I'm just kind of going through as it is. But why don't we why don't we cover that in new business? Yeah. Good. I okay. agree, but I wanted to go back to the home show where it says booth items, because I brought up last time that some of the things that we put out seem outdated, and. Like, yeah, like what? Uh, some of the materials, that? some of the handouts we have, uh, some of the city information sheets. It, it's, it, I mean, I've been doing the home show for, I don't know, six years now, five years, and it, it seem, some of them seem like they're not new, um, that the information isn't correct. Not your Buckthorn stuff, I don't mean that. Some of these other things. Other and, thing, you know, and, and just to look through what we have in that box of things, and would there be some other materials we could be sharing, fresh things? Yeah, you know, I'd be willing because I love to talk about Buckthorn, and that's <laughs> I get, <laughs> that's why I like to be there all the time. But you know, we, I would be willing to just take a inventory and list it what we do put out and then come back and make and discuss it with whoever I'm working with and then we could talk about appropriate or outdated or if there's some things we would like but we will have the emerald ash borer right, right. we can ask questions I, that seems good right I I'd help you with that Ellen but I'm just wondering if we decide that some materials are just not they're just too old. Where do we get permission? <laughs> well, no, where do we get new things? Where do we get, like, new information, new handouts on Emerald Ash Borer, or new uh, mm-hmm. information, and also just copies of the city policies? I guess we'd have to look at those. But, but the things that, you know, maybe the DNR, I know when Molly was in this group, um, she would bring things from the DNR and you know where are we going to get materials from the uh there's a tremendous amount of information on emerald ash borer on the minnesota department of agriculture's website that you can download and reproduce for for eab uh you know not a whole lot has changed on invasive species management like buckthorn and and uh, garlic mustard so the, the material we have may be 
old, but it's still current information. Right. Okay. Well, we, I think we just need to look through it. Yeah. Because I remember last year I was putting stuff back. The, the tree old. planting information is old, but it's the way of changing, tra excuse me, planting a tree hasn't changed mm -hmm. terrifically in the last mm -hmm. 20 years. But A lot of that so stuff. My we suggestion can. would be, would you two like to get together and, and look at the materials and see if the, some of them needed to be updated and some can just be pitched and if if we if you guys excuse me if you two make a internet search can the park and rec reproduce the materials and we'll spend some of our mm -hmm. yep. funds to do so yeah we can look for stuff and talk pardon me and we can look for things and talk Sh about it and mm -hmm. make recommendations yep i think we'll just have it. to use our judgment because we yeah. will not have time Mm -hmm. For the group to approve it, Ellen and right. I will just mm -hmm. make some executive decisions. Yep. We trust you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I would suggest we uh, schedule a time soon uh, to meet at the Park and Rec office, and I can show you what we have already um, in copies mm -hmm. and all the existing oh, material. Oh. Yep. And then we can work together on, sure. you know, the Internet or whatever to determine what, what we want to print out. Sure. So let's just uh, schedule some time you know, in the next <laughs> week or so. So we can look at it come before to my it gets office. hauled down. Yeah, to yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Why don't we mm -hmm. talk after the meeting? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is it okay to... Um, Press on to the Buckthorn Update and Conservation Corps crew. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Um, we have a couple of items to look at. There's a pre-registration form and there's information about the university covered up science, citizen science that we've discussed a couple times already here at the Tree Advisory Commission. So the, um, well, the pre-registration form is just an application to use the Mm -hmm. Covered up. Yeah, I science. would suggest we ask uh, Mr. Veit to come up and give us an update on on the, his efforts with the covered up U of M program. Yep. Thank you, Jordy. Yep, you're welcome, Jordy Veit, 1400 North Garden Street, New Orleans, Minnesota. Um, so, brief update on the covered up program um, and where we are at with that. Um, we were here talking early, well, about mid to late summer last year about it. Um, and at that point, we still had um, sites to choose um, and then get that approved. Um, the site was chosen. Um, Ellen and I had um, kind of walked around and picked a few sites out. Um, we ended up choosing kind of down on the 12th south side near the German, um, Ridgeway on German Street down there, um, in a little ways on the bike trail on that same side. Um, I submitted the survey, which was pictures of the site, um, coordinates of the site. Um, it had to meet the requirements of having um, some shade in the tree canopy. Um, so I sent that in and that was approved. Um, so the site has been okayed down there. Um, the other thing that we are waiting on with that is the training. Um, I think they we're hoping to have that set up by this point, um, but that has not happened, so that will be happening yet in March. And there is actually going to be two training things um, that will be taking part in. Um, one is just briefly setting up the site, so getting the plots set up and how they want us to put the seed down. Um, and then later this summer, we'll also be going into detail about how to report the observations and findings because um, we will be reporting those for a couple years once this gets started. Um, as far as buckthorn growth, um, how the other species that are planted in there. Um, so just as a review, um, the plot is about 30 by 40, and that will be divided up into six different plots. And three of those plots will get different native seed mix plantings. Um, they have not said what specific natives will be in there. Um, I do have some information on, let me switch places here so I can find my notes. Um, some of the grasses and sedges that may be in there um, would be Canada wild rye, um, eastern bottlebrush grass, 
um, switchgrass, little blue stem, common wood sedge. Um, some of the wildflowers we might see in that seed mix would be the red columbine, um, figwort, um, black-eyed Susan. Um, there's several other ones in there as well. Um, and then there is the possibility of some shrubs and trees in there, um, such as the choke cherry, black cherry, American basswood, um, dogwood, American black um, currant as well. Um, so those are possible seeds that may be in there. And this has been refined. They started out several years ago doing some research. I believe it was mostly centered around the Twin Cities area at the time where they had an expanded seed selection and they have chosen based off of their results the seed selection and expanded it out to the rest of Minnesota. Um, my understanding as well is participation in the program. They have filled all their spots for it around the state. Um, so they do have good participation in that as well. Um, so the survey, um, I think he had, um, Tom had in there, that was kind of the initial survey um, with making contact with them and then having to submit the information about the site in there. Um, so I guess are there questions? Any questions for Jordy? want to repeat myself too much. If <laughs> so a, quick, a re refresher for me again, are we, uh, the planting is going to take place sometime this year? <laughs> yep, it will be this spring. Okay. Um, so they were hoping late April to May, um, by the end of the May for sure. Um, I'm going to say more mid-May to end of May because I don't want to, you know, cause a fluke snowstorm later <laughs> later in the year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that should be completed by the end of May. Mm -hmm. Plots will be set up. Um, there will also be um, some of the plots we will mark with really small flags in a couple places. And as what we are going to do is they will provide some buckthorn seeds and they wanna see if they germinate. <laughs> and then at the end, we will be removing what does mm -hmm. come up. Mm -hmm. um, and the area is pretty well set up. I measured it out this fall when I had to submit the site. Um, I think once I do the final plot, there will be some weeding of some buckthorn in there yet around the edges, but mm -hmm. it is fairly close to being completely clean of buckthorn at this point. Um, and then subsequent years, this summer and subsequent years, we will be going in and doing some weeding out um, of any buckthorn that comes I'm keeping track of that, but we'll be weeding some of that out as well. Mm -hmm. Is it fenced or is there an enclosure at all or is it an My open understanding area? at this point is no. Mm -hmm. nope. Is so. it something that we wish to publicize or not? I guess that's up to this commission, up to the city on what you want to do. Well, and that. a um, suggestion coming from the U, you know, what... Uh, what's happening elsewhere? Does the U of M have a recommendation? Um, I haven't heard anything from them, but I can bring it up when mm -hmm. we get into our training mm -hmm. and see what yeah. they say. I think um, I haven't heard much, and I, th I believe they were still trying to get together a map of Minnesota that will plot the locations of projects as well that are taking place. Mm -hmm. So no, I think this is great, and I thank yeah. you very much for leading that. Um, you know, Jordy and Ellen and with support of the commission. Jordy, I'm, I'm, are you, um, is this one of your students who approached you or did you um, bring it up as a part of the classes you teach or? No, this is something that started through the University of Minnesota. Um, and being an invasive species and also kind of continuing ed for myself, I try to stay up on top of these things in this opportunity. Yes. They were advertising this opportunity, um, and that's when I inquired about information for So it. you are going to be the one who, I mean, it's your project. It's run through the U of M, but they're supplying all the stuff all and the all the stu training. Oh, okay. yep. mm -hmm. So we'll get the seed mix and any of the supplies that's all provided oh, to them at no cost wonderful. for I, us. I so, yeah. So, and if you want, um, Ellen, want, if you want in with some of the training stuff when they send me that, you're welcome to. I think they're just doing um, videos they were going to offer face to face, but I think um, with everything going on, they decided they yeah, could do it right. video wise instead of oh, having yeah. all these different trainings across the state 
So. So we, oh, that that's wonderful. So how many plots will you be doing? Um, it's going to be divided into six plots, and three of the plots will have the natives in, and the three of the plots are just going to be left as is okay. for comparison purposes. Yeah. It'll be so much fun. I'll learn a bunch. Yeah. And it'll be interesting, I think, once the natives start to come up, I'll be interested in kind of trying to identify what ones we actually have. Um, or maybe once we get to that point, they might even specifically specify what, what ones we have in there. Yeah, so I'll be anxious to see so. what natives come up. Too. Yeah, it, it'll be really good because I've had a lot of people ask me, said, well, one, once I take the buckthorn out, what am I supposed to plant there? You know, mm -hmm. what's going to yeah. grow underneath some of the mother trees that are already established. So yep. it's been good to see. Yeah, and I think they're they're hoping that there's one or two of these that really stands out as being able to shade uh -huh. it enough to keep yeah, the buckthorn really from be helpful. coming out, which would be a nice, much better long-term solution. Oh, very much so. And I will be back. I will, I'm planning on coming back. Um, to either your next one or the one after that, for sure, I can bring some pictures yeah. with when I have some more more exciting things other than just the canopy of the trees to to show once things get set up in that as well. So, yeah. So, did you say though that once it's set up, then you might do some maintenance or? Yep, they are gonna require us to do some weeding out of there but why i don't understand so, that i guess why if you want to see what happens in nature why would i don't i guess i don't understand i that think concept. um i'll have to go through the training to see what they're going to specify mm -hmm. for weeding out yeah. um i don't think because they said they said in their timeline that the weeding out would only be like a couple hours per year mm -hmm. so i don't think it's anything major yeah. that they're doing I think it's more so probably I think they want to try to keep that 30 by 40 area mm -hmm. oh like so around that beautiful. outline pretty well yeah so mm -hmm. I think that's what it's gonna be so mm -hmm. well, that's exciting through the summer of 2022 so yep oh wow yeah and the other other thing too is once um, once we get the plot set up, like we want to do herbicide use this spring yet before we set the plots up, we are welcome to. But once the plots are set up, then that has to end for during this time frame. So, any other questions or comments for Jordy? Have one. I, I have several. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> The plot that you've selected, how how much shade is over that plot? Um, I want to say it's about sixty percent, depending on. There's a part of it that's a bit more open okay. than the other end. Yeah, yeah. But I actually have pictures of kind of both ends, and one is fairly covered, and there's one you can see a pretty good opening of sunlight in. Because a lot of the species that you mentioned are very shade intolerant. So. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I think that's why they wanted us to do pictures of the canopy because I think they're trying to make sure they get that balance okay. of sunlight versus shade. Well, so. Is this a plot that's had buckthorn on it that's been removed? Yes. Yep. I don't think you'll need to add any buckthorn yeah. seeds. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, um, in fact, this past year is, I, th yeah. I think Brenda was yeah. down in that area quite a bit. Um, yeah. too so and there will like I say there will be a little bit to take out of there yeah. this spring so just anecdotal experience of mine about the only plant that I've ever seen that has crowded out buckthorn is elderberry, elderberry. A real real dense shade keeps them from germinating underneath that but um, in terms of whether or not we publicize the location of the research plot I would I would not be in favor of that because you're, if you get a lot of trampling on that site, you're certainly yeah. going to skew whatever yep. your yep. research results the, might Yeah, that's be. the other thing. So, mm -hmm. Ellen, would you be willing to kind of be the liaison from the Tree Advisory Committee oh, with Jordy absolutely. on this project? Since you yeah, because Jordy is the only non-paid volunteer I have. <laughs> <laughs> 
But just, just so he has a conduit into the Tree Advisory Commission without having to email five people all the time. Though. Absolutely. I'll be overjoyed to do that. Yeah, I'm really excited about this project. Cause yeah, that's yeah always, I am. That concern of what do you do afterwards has other it's than keep... It's always been, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anything else for, for Jordy? Well, thanks very much. Thank I'm really You're excited welcome. about this project. You're welcome. Very much. Okay, any, any more on uh, Buckthorn updates or the Conservation Corps crew? Ellen? Um, yeah, I've, I've got a Buckthorn report. I just want to say what's been going on. Um, the, uh, let's see, in November, there were 34 hours, 24 hours, or 24 hours of, of volunteer time. In December, uh, Dewey, that's all I, I just know his name, Dewey. His last name is Roloff? Uh, Roloff. Roloff, yeah, yeah. Mr. Tractor. Roloff and his helper. Um, we had money in the budget and they worked, I figured, 20 hours a piece and so that would be, so one machine and one man, or yeah, one did the sawing and one did the pushing around. Um, and then I added, then I, treated all the stumps that they saw down. So there was 69 hours of total work of buckthorn removal in December. Um, I don't know if any of you have gone down and see, but it it's absolutely, I had sprayed them all and there wasn't anything I sprayed that they didn't get and it's pretty bare um, and there's large giant uh, piles of buckthorn very large trees scattered around um, I'm just wondering if there is if we can if there's any budget we've got 750 from the uh, Isaac Walton and uh, whether there's any way that we could reduce some of those piles um, because it's really all there uh, from 7th to 12th uh, not that much but yeah 7th to 12th it, it's uh, just pretty much huge piles of buckthorn that have been cut. Are you looking for something like a sentence to service crew or, or use of the uh, um, Conservation Corps crew to do that kind of work? Well, I, I don't know how you can, um, I would think chipping Chip, you know, sawing and chipping on the spot. I don't know what vehicle, you would have to cut them, you know, I don't know what vehicle could do it more efficiently than. Oh, so you're suggesting the use of a chipper on site. Yeah, that's, that's according to what, now anybody here gone, have you gone down and looked? Or Steve, have you yes, gone I down have. and looked? Mm -hmm. yep. And it, it's tremendous, I guess I'm mm -hmm. not, yeah. I'm not. Um, Exactly. Well, I, I think um, the Park and Rec Department maintenance supervisor um, is chipping away at that or trying to have a plan to help remove that. Okay. Uh, so it's a matter I of uh, us working together and determining where we're going to use the Conservation uh, Corps crew, where we're going to uh, ask the sentence to service to help, uh, where we're going to use private contractors to help. So it's just a matter of... Uh, Mm -hmm. meeting and reviewing and looking at all that and, and of course determining weather and uh, you know what kind of condition the grounds in uh, when it comes to machinery you know or if there are things that we need to do when the grounds frozen um, which I think this would mm -hmm. there the the real down downer I think or is using is a lot of ground was chewed up by the machine 
we used uh, front end loader. Skid uh, loader? Skid loader. Yeah, and so a lot was chewed up. Um, and um, what I have to say about sentence to serve is sentence to serve, I have not been able to get them for a year and a half. And I was promised <laughs> by Eric that he'd have time. And what actually is happening is their time is being taken by uh, removal of other things. Is it uh, ash trees from county parks? Because we sense to serve s serves two two different. Uh, well, it serves many public agencies, agencies state, and, county, and local. You bet. Yeah. The new home volunteer Buckthorn project is not. And he promised and promised and said he'd even come in January, uh, in December yet, and he just never came. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, there was, used to be, er there was Eric and then the other one whose father owns the tree service, and he's not there. And then there was one other, the last time I got them, there was this other person. But I haven't, I don't know if there's still two sentences to serve crews Yeah, around. my understanding is there is. Yeah, um, but you know, Eric I can't and get them. Cody, I think. So, sense to serve isn't an option. Um, as far as the uh, what I'd like to say about the uh, conservation corps, I met with is it Mr. Elliot or uh, there? Ekstrom. Huh? Ekstrom. Ekstrom. Yeah, yeah. And he he um, of course couldn't squeeze us in. Um, and I, I just wonder, they don't use anything but chainsaws, right? And the stuff. Well, the Conservation Corps crews are, are basically hand crews, crews that use hand tools, tools. and, and right. mechanized hand tools. They can apply herbicide. Right. And, but, and uh, what they don't have any equipment to speak of. Right. They apply equipment. the herbicide, which um, Dewey doesn't. But I was. He said to me, do you mean you, he just kind of, it sounded like they just want a saw. They'll put the herbicide on and then to heck with how to take it out. And I said, well, um, a lot of that's left is against the, against the uh, hill to German Street. And I sure can't lug that heavy stuff up. So he seemed very adverse to do anything but sawing and my and it at $1,225 a day I don't know what you paid Dewey for his his he and his helper for um, 20 hours of work 10 per one machine two guys but if they were cheaper than sentenced to than the Conservation Corps I would I would say I wouldn't waste my money on the Conservation Corps, um, actually, from, you know, if, if they're willing to, you know, saw and haul the stuff out onto German Street or haul it to the edge of the bike trail, yeah, you know, but Dewey could get what's left in half a day, and I don't know how, what he cost, but I think $1,225 a day is, is a lot for just a chainsaw. Well, it's not a chainsaw. It's a, it's a group of people with chainsaws. Correct. But Correct. I, I think. And I don't know if you supervise. I think this needs to be a project of park and recs because we don't have any staff as the Tree Advisory Commission. No, we, have we a very don't. small budget. Uh, yes, you know, we there's, do. There's things to consider here. A request coming from the City of New Ulm Park and Recreation Department to sentence and to, for service might be viewed differently than a request from from Ellen or from the Tree Advisory Commission might carry a little bit more weight. Uh, negotiating with the Conservation Corps crew and trying to figure out, 
you know, what's the best mix of a hand crew and chippers and other kinds of equipment. But Correct. I would suggest that it's huge. You know, pulling this, I know that site pretty well because I live there, and that was the area that my dog and I used to frequent. And uh, right. I wouldn't want to pull it up that bluff to German Street. The more no, logical thing really, would be to pull yeah. it, any material down or chip it on site. But even chipping, you need to be close to the bike path because yes, you do. The site is very yes, steep. Yes, you do. Yes, but, you do. So, so we need muscle. <laughs> We need to get all the, you know, it's because we, you know, what Brenda and I do when we don't have tree, you know, huge trees, majority, is we weed, literally, buckthorn removal involves weeding the forest floor. Right. And we're not adverse to that. We do that. That's what we do. The, the other thing that can and, be done. Uh, but, you know, yeah. conservation court, we don't need to pay them to do that. If you're, if you're under the canopy and you buck up the slash, cut it into relatively small pieces, it's going to rot down pretty fast. Buckthorn is not a very durable wood. But, so there's, there's some opportunity where you can leave it, and if you're trying to cultivate new seedlings of more desirable plants, you're going to be competing with the deer. And if you leave trash on the ground, it impedes the deer as well. But Well, so. you know, that, see, I don't have... So if we, let's say, I don't have any faith that we'll be able to get um, sentenced to serve, but, the, but Dewey or the Conservation Corps, can, you know, I get that. You can chop it up and then just make big wood piles, and it will rot, right? Well, it would rot faster if you just scattered it and not piled it up. Uh, piling is fine if you're going to chip it because you can move the chipper from pile to pile. But, you know, we're not a land management organization here. We're no, the Tree no. Advisory Commission. That's true. Yeah. Right. So is this a project that belongs primarily with Park and Rec in the maintenance it's of the trail? It's park land. Yeah. Well, Tom. <laughs> so, so, Ellen, why what, if they were what in What do there you the propose for dealing with the residue or the buckthorn on this city i think it'll be a matter of alan and uh our maintenance supervisor meeting on site okay and uh, reviewing the situation and then developing a plan of all action. right that sounds reasonable does that sound reasonable to you yeah, Ellen? it does mm -hmm. okay so can it just be loaded up on a one of the big trucks work trucks and hauled to they're, the they're like 20 they're large 25 to 30 foot trees yeah they could haul quite a bit on a big truck is what I'm saying because they take a skid loader if it's been in there ready with a grapple one they can load up quite a bit because if you're going to try tripping all that well this well I don't know but I see you know I do see the city in, in come the, in and do it take it out you know but I don't know if they can take these hu huge ones out usually they come in and take out what we saw what I saw or, and what I saw mm -hmm. and but they're not those huge ones that I, I think I, I think this, this project needs to be discussed not here at the Tree Advisory Commission. It's an issue with with the Buckthorn Blasters or whatever volunteers and Park and Rec to deal with the land management issue on park lands. And yeah, Tom has expressed absolutely. a desire to meet with you. And, and that would be the wonderful with the person and the, develop the, the project. Well, it'll I, be. Uh, I haven't probably called Ryan, them for a couple. Ryan. Ryan Wire. Wire. Yeah, I I need to call. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's been winter and stuff. So, okay. And then the only other thing was, um, well, I guess that was it. Okay. Um, uh, well, you know what to do. Oh, yeah. The other thing is, a quarter of the bike trail is in private hands. Um, and I've, my hope is, and I expressed this to Tom multiple times, that the hope is we could buy that land so we can take care of, so we can start removing the buckthorn because all those female trees, berries are, you know, being eaten by the birds and re-contaminating <laughs> the years we put in. So is there, have you, he, and there is, 
we cannot do it. He's got no chest passing signs. And anyway. Yeah, it's uh, privately owned. Um, yeah, and I, and, that's uh, a huge problem, I believe. Yeah, we'd have to probably go through the city council um, to receive authority to even discuss um, that. Well, I think it's time to do that, actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's review that, and then uh, we'll bring that to the city manager for a uh, suggested um, process. I, you know, I wandered the city to looking for Buckthorn, and I've um, discovered a, a large plot on Kraft Foods. I, I got the map, and it's Kraft Foods, so... If it's okay, I'm going to try to contact Kraft Foods and see if they'll be willing to remove their buckthorn, a lot of female trees mm -hmm. from there. Um, yeah. it's, I, I, I walked mm -hmm. by the back gate, mm -hmm. and that's where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's a problem talking to um, private, private landowners, landowners about yeah. their land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Ellen. You're welcome. Any any other commission <coughs> members have any concerns or updates on Buckthorn and the Conservation Corps crew? I will add that garlic mustard has come to the bike trail, so Jordy helped with that to a great deal. And before uh, I got some help from um, Park uh, Park and Rec. And to help me spray and so we treated it in the fall and in March now when it starts to sprout I can spray some more so we are also battling garlic mustard on the bike trail thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome okay item 5.6 utility billing informational insert and it kind of combines with 5.7 and what we had in the earlier discussion on on the frequently ask questions so in front of us I think we all have a copy of the 12th annual big tree contest 2020 which uh, this year is looking for the largest Ohio Buckeye tree in the city limits of New Ulm yeah so we uh, brought the latest uh, rendition of the form of this year's form and uh, <clears throat> I will get it reproduced uh, with the EAB frequently asked questions, you know, for the utility billing in the home show. But I'd like the tree commission to review that and suggest any final edits. Staff has been through it a few times, so I don't know if you commissioners or uh, advisors. I've looked at it a couple times and made mm -hmm. some comments on it. So. Be, be interesting to see how many of these show up in the city. Mm -hmm. Do we ever include um, pointing out or trying to distinguish it from horse chestnuts? Would that be something that would fit in here? Or is that part of the challenge, is to make sure you don't have a horse chestnut mm -hmm. confused? Well, I think we want to make sure that the application form is, um, you know, complete and concise. It's, it's complete and concise for Ohio Buckeye. Um, you know, there's usually a c couple of the tree commissioners that go out and assess the Verify. trees. So if, if we start running in the horse chestnut, we'll just not measure them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need a resolution on this. So thank you for putting this together. Yeah, if there's no further edits, we will, uh, um, you know, uh, print them up. Okay. All right. Uh, down to new business, and we have several items of new business. We have a couple of printouts of emails received that appears to, about the uh, ash tree removal and the tree inventory survey. Uh, my quick read of this is uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out is this something that, that's a response to uh, a statement by Mark Snowbrick or is this Mark Snowbrick's response to Jeff Anderson? I believe it's the latter, Mr. Chair. Pardon me? <coughs> I believe it's the latter. Mark is responding to Jeff because it 
It starts with Jeff and Tree Commission. Okay. Mark three plus. Because this is essentially what what the city has done. Is, is, yeah, is, I, is, I did not discuss this with uh, Mr. Anderson. It just popped up on my computer like it okay. did yours. So I, I, I think he was talking with John a little bit. They were kind of together on the bidding process, and um, I think they're all headed in the right direction. Okay. They, they want to take the, the poor trees first, as far as I know. So, I mean, a little more update on the bid opening that took place yesterday. It was a very, very excellent bid opening. There were a, a vast number of, uh, of bids. I can't remember. We, I don't have the information here. It was handled by um, the planning office. But I don't know if it was about a dozen bids, uh, ranging from approximately $65 a tree to approximately $700 a tree. For his removals or yes, what? removals. This is just the removal phase. The sixty-five dollars a tree. Yeah. Was yeah. that including the stumps Ooh. also? <laughs> no, I don't think the stumps. Uh -uh. No, the stumps. The city is going to oh. take out as an in-kind contribution. So um, the the planning office is in uh, right now, um, reviewing and verifying all the bids, and then once uh, staff has got. A recommendation uh, upon completion of all the verification that will go to the City Council and there's a probability that that will go to the council at their next meeting um, a week from Tuesday to award the bid for removals okay. and then this uh, other information has to do with exactly which trees and how many trees are removed so uh, it's it's moving forward um, it's great news that we might be able to remove significantly more trees than we had thought yes. with our budget. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so there's there's two components to the grant. There's removals and replacement. So correct. The RFP both things in the in the bid or just the removals. This the was bid? just the removal phase. Yeah. The That's, planting yeah. phase has not been sent out for bids yet. Is that Mr. correct? Mr. Chair, yeah, it's my understanding that he was going to follow up with the planning um, proposal and bid as well. That's that's the rub. You've got to balance, the right. obviously, the removals and the planning. So if we can get the number on the plannings, uh, I think we can probably increase the number of removals if, if okay. they balance. I mean, I don't know how a person can... I, I don't know how the bid was structured, whether it was, yeah. was on a, a rate by tree or... Or a, jo or a job sort of thing, so project. Yeah. So is it a more of a piecework type bid or? The removal bid? Yeah. Uh, as Tom suggested, we really didn't handle that, but it's, as I understand it, the trees are identified. Right. And it, it's per tree. Was that your question? Well, I, my question was, how is the bid structured? Is the bid structured on a, on a, as a job, or is it the, the it's structured by hour, or is it structured by tree? By tree. Okay. Is there a cap on that? There was an amount. I don't know that it was the okay. cap. Uh, John Nisley, the planner from the planning office, I had a s short discussion with him, and I asked him, since we got such a good bid, or you got such <laughs> a good bid, can we increase the quantity? Uh, would he want more money? And he said that the contractor seemed uh, amendable to that, that he could just keep keep working at that price. So more to follow, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, good. That's uh, yep. if if the low bid is um, is made in good faith and the contractor has the capability, that's a tremendous bid. Right. Exactly. And Mr. Chair, they did look at the trees, I assume, right? So they know that they weren't just little trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's okay. Um, any other questions or comments regarding the bid? Uh, other items of new business. We had talked earlier about the frequently asked questions, or do we want to revisit that? Okay. 
Do we? Uh, I, I had uh, sent out a sort of an, a query early on, but given the fact that we're dealing with the bidding and Emerald Ash Borer and everything else, do we want to go to monthly meetings instead of every other month? We don't have to decide that now, but it's something to think about. Our next next scheduled meeting would be May 7th. I guess as a, as a side question, is the planting bidding process going to follow this within the next month? And is that the planting intended to happen this summer right away? Uh, I think it's a two-year uh, project, two-year grant from the DNR, um, which will go, I think, through the year 21. So there's two, I think, two summers involved with the project, um, including removals and planting. So I don't know for sure exactly where the planning department is with um, the RFP and the bid process for planting. Um, I don't know if that's going to because we might be we might be late to we're probably late to establish that for this spring and summer. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that's it's likely that any planning that's done is going to probably be done in the fall at the earliest. Mm -hmm. There's this, the removals will probably take place. When when is the bid to be awarded? It has to go through the next city council meeting. At the earliest, yeah, it would be a week from then Tuesday that the city the council contractor is going to take some time to mobilize and then start on the trees. So that project may, my guess would be just move into the summer sometime. Uh, I think there's merit to. Right now, at least, there seems to be so many issues that the Tree Commission should, you know, pay attention to, and possibly, can we, can you temporarily change it to a monthly meeting, or I wouldn't. You don't want to come to a meeting and not have anything to discuss. Is but if there's things that. Um, you know, don't happen because we didn't meet and it, it drags on. I think four times, is it, no, six times a year it gets to be, and I don't know how often historically we don't have a quorum. That's true. <laughs> which I think is a lot, because the last time I came we just visited <laughs> for lack of a quorum. So possibly we should consider that but unless people if they're going to find that burdensome and not show up then again you know then we're not really going to make any progress but well maybe something to think about and uh, and uh, explore further on our May 7th meeting I'm not, I'm not getting a strong upwelling of people saying, yes, we need to meet monthly right now. I think one thing I would request of the city is if the city planning department and John is going to be heavily involved in tree issues, he probably needs to come here as an advisory member. Yeah, Mr. Chair, he had to uh, go down to, the, to a meeting in St. Paul and was un unavailable okay. this afternoon, but we, he certainly is planning on being to the meetings and I would think by the May 7th meeting be able to answer all your questions with regard to timing of removals and planting and bids and that those yeah, things. And if that information comes up earlier we can circulate circulate that to yeah. the other Commission members I, I just have another question regarding the bids and maybe somebody can explain it to me how can you just bid for removal and not know what your planning costs are because you have to plant a tree for every one you take out, right? So if you do that, how do you know how many tree, what you can afford to do if you don't know what it's gonna cost to plant another tree? You know what I mean? So you, I think the first step was to try to get a handle on the cost of removals. And now that they have that information, they can modify the number of removals or leave it as originally bid 
and then ha no, uh, and then move on to to bidding out the <coughs> planting costs yeah, for a similar number to of me trees. You need to know no. both in the, a way. The number of trees removed will also impact the bidding for trees to be replaced Correct. because the contractor is going to look at the size of the job and that's going to impact the bid. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I believe that the the bid was structured using estimated costs. So he he tried to balance that, I'm sure. What, right. I mean, I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, yeah. it, it doesn't fit very well, but the people that do removals and the people that plant aren't right. the same. Different so you have to so kind of separate it. So uh, the good news is a wonderful bit. So yeah. mm -hmm. let's move mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. More to come. No action necessary. Yeah. It's an information item. Mm -hmm. Is there any way we can quickly find out how many of the tree commission meetings, the six over, let's say, the last two years were canceled because of lack of a quorum? I would estimate uh, one a year. Oh, that's not too many. Yeah. And I did just find information here um, from Lisa Pelzel up in the admin office who books this room. Um, and that it would be available monthly on the first Thursday at 4 p.m., which, of right. course, is another thing to consider. Yeah. So meeting monthly or more often than bi-monthly is possible on the same date and time as we are now, the first Thursday of the month, or the first Thursday at 4 o'clock here. Mr. Chair, I've had a lot of, a lot of experience with commissions, and... It kind of depends on the makeup of the commissioners, and this group seems to be very dedicated in want, wanting to attend these meetings. So I'd be very surprised if you did, if you had to cancel meetings because you didn't have quorum, unless you went to Hawaii or something. So I think maybe those were some past commissions. I think that July meeting is always a little bit. That one I, we that usually one, reschedule. Yeah, it's. it's around it just, the I think that's the one for sure. <laughs> Well, the so first we reschedule yeah. that one usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A quorum is three of five. Um, yeah. This is a relatively small commission. Park and Rec Commission is nine commissioners. Oh wow! So you need to have more than fifty percent to make a quorum. Okay, can we defer that to the May seventh meeting? I agree. I agree. Is there with are, that. are any more items of new business to come before the commission? Okay, hearing none, I declare us adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.